right. So we're talking, we're in a series called Winning the War Within. Have you noticed there's a battle on the inside of you? Yeah, there is, man. Every day. I mean, uh, there is spirit available to us on the inside. There is flesh available to us on the inside. And, and I don't know about you, but I can go from pretty spiritual, pretty godly, pretty, you know, in touch with the Lord, to losing my cookies, like, that quick. I mean, I've come a long way. God has done a great work. But there are times, I, when I first moved down here, I honestly, you people drove so crazy. I honestly thought it was my job to, like, straighten out the drivers of California. That is no joke. So people would just be going, I'm going, like, 73 and people just zoom, zoom. So I thought, I, I'm going to help them. I get in the fast lane. I'm brake checking people. I'm, you know, I, th- this is no joke. This is Carnal Bob, I'm telling you. There would be a guy tailgating another guy. I mean, like inches at 75 miles an hour. I'd pull up next to him and I'd go, get a little closer. Get a little closer. They're looking at me like, what the heck are you doing? I'd go, yeah, why don't you kill someone, you know? So anyways, I've come. That's the flesh. That's Diablo. Galatians chapter 5. So we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, which that wasn't. Um, We're talking about the war within. We're talking about faithfulness a little bit today. Um, Israel was considered a choice vine with good stock and reliable stock that bore fruit. And that's Israel's uh, symbol throughout history, branches, vineyards, fruitfulness. And then Jeremiah would come and uh, prophesy to them and say, but you went crooked and you went astray and you don't bear fruit anymore. And, and, and so he w- the prophet would indict them. And so, you know, they, they, had, you know they, they, they were prospered by God and they were fruitful, but fruitfulness, listen, became idolatry. I mean, we have to be careful. When you get too much of anything, it can become idolatrous. And Israel became idolatrous. And then God, you know, Jesus was born. And so when Jesus comes, he says, I am the true vine. And we're going to get to that in a second. He is everything Israel was supposed to be, never was, couldn't and wouldn't become. Jesus is the fulfillment of the fruitfulness of Israel in all its totality. And so the Holy Spirit is producing real fruit in us. And, it's, and the real fruit is real life. And the thing about real fruit is it's reproducible. And so from Genesis to Revelation, you see fruitfulness. You know, be fruitful and multiply. Started in Genesis, all through the Old Testament. In the Psalms, you see fruitfulness. In the New Testament, you see 40 plus times where the word fruitful is used. And so Paul in Galatians chapter 5 gets to the point where he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Everybody say, fruit of the Spirit. And so we're going we're gonna to move into that. Verse 16, he says, walk in the Spirit. Walk alongside. Walk closely in the Spirit. And you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh lusts against the Spirit. The Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another. You know, these are at odds. These are in opposition. These are violently opposed to each other. These are conflicted. This is going on on the inside of you and I all the time, internally, every single day. And these are contrary to one another so that you don't do the things that you really want to do. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is... And I love this. This is real, and it's tangible fruit. It's not imitation. It's not ornamental. It's not like grandma's fake thing of fruit, remember? (laughs) You know, grandma's had that thing, you know, and when you're a kid, you know, you went for it once, you know, look at that. Oh, a rubber grape. It's like, it looked good from a distance, but it had no substance, you know? It was ornamental. I don't know about you. I don't want to be an ornamental Christian. I don't want to be somebody that looks good on the outside, polished up on the outside, but Jesus referred to me as, you know, yeah, you look good on the outside. You got the bumper sticker, you got the cross around your neck, but inside you're full of death. You're full of dead man's bones. That's what Jesus said about religious people. So you and I can choose to either walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, bear fruit of the Spirit, or we can play some kind of religious game where we just kind of polish it up, we clean it up, we're not as bad as, you know, the co-workers, and we're just, you know, just kind of externally looking okay. But that's not, that's not what the life of God is all about. That's not what the Spirit is about. The fruit of the Spirit, it is love. It's the visible, tangible expression of the power that's working on the inside. What's working on the inside of you and me will manifest on the outside. That's what Jesus said. He said, make the tree good or make the tree bad. A tree is known by its fruit. Do something about it. 
yield, bear fruit, make the tree good or the fruit bad. Isn't it interesting? He just wants one or the other. You know, he says, I want you hot or cold, not lukewarm. He doesn't, he doesn't want that middle. He wants real or fake. He wants hot or cold. He wants real food, fruit or go be religious. But he doesn't want that goofy middle. When he talks about what these things are, and these are things you can't earn. These are things that you can't just say, wow, this is a good list. I'm going to adopt them to my life. No, because they're born of the spirit, not of the flesh. This is the spirit. It's love and joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. And let us not be conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Isn't it interesting that he talks about the war within, then he talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and then he gives this warning about not being conceited. And you're thinking, well, right after the fruit of the Spirit, why would there be a warning against being conceited? Because sometimes when we're doing good and we're looking good, pride creeps in. It, 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 it does. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of bizarre because you and I didn't do anything to produce this fruit. Only God did. Only in his grace. Only in his mercy. Only in his kindness. Only in his life did any of these fruit manifest in our life. But then he says, don't be conceited. You know, you think about the Apostle Peter, you know, one minute he drops to his knees and says to Jesus, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. I mean, he just couldn't take it. He just, I'm not even worried, just get away from me. You skip on a few chapters later and he's going, I wonder who the greatest is. How do you go from on your knees in humility to arrogance? Like, I think I'm one of the big shots here. Uh, There's a proneness in everybody. When we get too much, it becomes idolatrous. We get too much, we become conceited. And and I'm telling you, you and I have to be, uh, this isn't in the notes, you got to be very, very careful against spiritual conceit. Elitism. You know, you think about, you know, the, the disciples one day, they, they said, Jesus, there's, there's some casting out demons in your name that they're not of us. Should we forbid them? Isn't it interesting? Somebody's casting out demons. Your first assumption is that because they're not in your inner circle, they shouldn't be doing the work of the kingdom. So I think, you know, we all got to pay close attention. Don't be conceited. Now, let me give you two essentials to pruning. If you and I don't get this, the fruit is irrelevant. You don't start with the fruit and say, here's the fruit. Here's the character of faithfulness and, you know, do this. No, 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 no. It all starts back here with walking in the Spirit. And then you have to go to John 15. So if this is, you know, something that you've heard before, you've read a lot, but let's just look for some new revelation in this. John chapter 15, verse 1. The two essentials to bearing fruit are these two things, pruning and remaining. Everybody say pruning. pruning. Remaining. That's it. I mean, really, that. What'd you get? You leave here. What do you talk about? Pruning and remaining. Okay? That's all. That's all you have to get here. These are Jesus' last words. He's going to the cross. He's having the most meaningful, meaningful dialogues. He's gone from the upper room. He's washed the disciples' feet. He's had the last supper with them. He's going to the cross. Final words tend to be the most substantive words of people's lives. People, and I've been around people in their last months or year or days and hours, and I'm telling you, they're not talking trivial. They're talking from their guts. They're talking from their experience. They're talking words that they can impart, legacy words. And this is Jesus. So these are are big, big time words. I'm the true vine. This is Jesus. I'm the true vine. My father is the gardener. What does this gardener do, Pastor Bob? Well, verse 2 tells us. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. (laughs) Yeah, you picture the old guy, the old gardener dude with the big hat, you know, and the sunscreen and all that. He's just sipping on tea and he's out there. But then there's God. (laughs) And he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will even be more fruitful. So here's the deal. You get cut either way. (laughs) That's a bad day at church. (laughs) You get cut either way. Let me tell you how this, how the gardener, how this goes down. You're not bearing any fruit. 
your branch is getting cut. <laughs> Point two, bearing fruit, <laughs> you're getting pruned. Either way, there's a very sharp utensil that it's looking to come to your life soon. Today. Today. It's going to happen today. Some of you are going to walk out <laughs> limbless. There's going to be something that gets removed today. You came in here drinking your coffee, doing all good, you know, and life is good. And you came in here and there's this, <laughs> there's a snipping going to go on. <laughs> are you excited? You should be excited. Because <laughs> he's doing it. I'm not doing it. My best attitude or my worst attitude can't prune you. But God can. <laughs> he's coming. He's here. Hallelujah. He's going to prune us. And we're going to be more fruitful. Why does there have to be the pruning? Why the cutting? A friend of mine was talking to a vintner. Is that what you call him? Vintner. And just dialoguing with the guy. And here's what the guy said. Here's the deal about grapevines. They're prone to wildness. <laughs> Not the good kind of wildness. The kind that doesn't bear fruit, that just wants to wander off on its own, that wants to just, just kind of parade and look good, but doesn't bear any fruit. It's just wild. So you gotta prune them back. You gotta cut off, you gotta cut off the suckers. You gotta prune it to redirect the internal life to the places that do bear fruit. This is good, man. We're going to get pruned today. Not hacked. Jesus isn't coming with a chainsaw. Because when you see, first read that, first few times I read that, I thought, oh, my God, what does that look like? You know what I mean? Just, here I come. No, 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 no. It's going to be precise. It's going to be good. And notice he prunes it. See, he knows what to prune. He knows how to prune it. It's labor intensive for the gardener. It's, it, this, is, this is all good. And the result is you're going to be more fruitful. I'm going to be more fruitful. So how does it, how does it look? You know, just practical. Here, here's one thing. I had a friend of mine. He was an older guy, too. But he was still wrestling with lust. And, uh, and he, bought, he built this house, big house, man, on this river. It was beautiful. And, and he was telling me about his struggle. And he bought this satellite dish, big satellite. You got channels from all over the world. No filtering. So a lot of countries, man, just show some pretty garbagey stuff. And he goes, and I was tired of it. He goes, because, you know, my wife would be at the other end of the house, and I knew she'd be coming. I'd have to, like, change the channel, you know, get the, get the satellite moving, you know, to get away from the channel I was watching. And he goes, it was just, man, it was just, it was killing me. He goes, so I prayed one night. I said, God, I said, I'm not strong enough to get rid of this, but you are. And I just, I need you to get rid of this thing for me. And that night, there was a storm. <laughs> now, this is, this is hysterical. He had five acres, really nice house, big satellite dish, I mean monster. A tree blew down and cut the satellite dish in half. In half. Let me, let me just tell you something here. Sometimes Jesus calms the storms. Other times he creates storms. Jesus created a storm. Now, I don't know what the probability and the odds of that happening, but I'm telling you what, he knew it was God. And that pruned his lust problem. Because he did what he couldn't do. You know, God did what he couldn't do in his own strength. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. So here's the, here's the two things. Invite the pruning to bear fruit. Now, everything you read about this is you cannot have growth and fruit without pruning. You just can't. I, I read it. Go look it up. Google it. There is no growth. There is no fruit without pruning. you got to prune the suckers. Do we have a picture of a sucker? Here's a sucker. <laughs> How do you know it's a sucker? Because it says this is a sucker. <laughs> I'm discerning that's a sucker. You discerned right. That's a sucker. That's, I Googled it. And if you have tomatoes, how many of you have grown tomatoes? Okay. These things just go right there. And here's what they tell you. They tell you to pinch them. 
Why? Because those little suckers will take, they'll take up space. They will take up oxygen. They will take up the juice that runs through it. They will take up what's supposed to go to those healthy stocks that are going to produce fruit. You got to get rid of the suckers, the drainers, the suckers, non-essential. It may look, it, doesn't it look, it looks like life. It's not life. It's taking life. Henceforth the name, sucker. This is a sucker. Suckers sap the plant's energy, directing energy away from the fruiting branches. Branches. You know, and, and then when you read, you know, because I come from Washington, eastern Washington is like the apple capital of the world. I've been in other countries, picked up apples from where I, where I used to vacation, Chelan, Washington, Wenatchee, Washington. But I'm, I'm telling you that this goes on all the time, the pruning, the dormancy, the lopping, and how much, and it's interesting because I've vacationed in the winter, and you go by these acres and acres and acres of apple trees, and man, sometimes the, the tree is just like three big stumpy things coming out of one trunk. And you look at it and you go, my God, there's nothing less. Here's what they say. You can prune and should prune up to 30% of the tree. I mean, that just sounds like amputation to me. I mean, 30%, look at your life, lay your whole life out, everything in your life and go, 30% is getting whacked away, getting pruned away. Yeah, why? To redirect the energy so you can bear real fruit, tangible fruit. And it's worth it because they were non-essentials. You didn't need it. No, what does it look like? It looks like this. You know, we get married a few years into it, you know. I'm one of those guys. You ever meet a guy that's kind of ticked off most of the time? Do you know people like that? I see a couple of you elbowing your spouse. Okay. We're on to something. Awesome. No, you know the person that's ticked off, like, oh, how come we can't find the cleats? And, you know, how come that's not clean over there? You know, and I'll, you guys leave French fries in the car. And blah, 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 blah. You know that ticked off, angry thing? You know that? That guy? I was that guy. And then my wife one day, she goes, you know what? If you don't get a handle on your anger, you're going to counseling. Hmm. Well, since... My wife's voice and the Holy Spirit's voice sound similar. I said, okay, fine. That was my last exhaust. And she'll tell you today, it's a done deal. It was a done deal. She didn't prune it. She just gave a word. She gave the word, God gave the revelation, change was made, anger got pruned. That's how it works. Pruning lets light and air in. Pruning encourages growth. You know, if you're immature, you don't want anything taken away from you. If you're mature, you don't want anything in the way of growth. It's true. And I get it. I, I have bouts of immaturity. No, don't take that. No, not that. Not the golf channel. No. <laughs> Please, really? Yeah. First got married, you know. I'd work, go to the health club, play basketball, play in leagues, play in soccer leagues, come home 10 o'clock at night, turn on ESPN, na -na -na, na -na -na, and watch whatever, any kind of ball that was going anywhere. And then 11 o'clock, I'd connect with my wife. <laughs> and it took her maybe about two weeks of that. And she said, you know, that's not really what I signed up for. I said, why? This is great. <laughs> Fear of intimacy masks itself in a lot of different things. <laughs> Sila. Here's the deal. Our Father prunes using the word and conviction and precision. Hebrews 4, the word of God is quick, sharp, powerful than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Once again, it's, it's a quick pruning. It's not a reckless deal. Get over it. Don't be afraid of it. You don't want it there. Verse 3. You're already clean because of the word I've spoken. You remain in me, and I also in you. 
No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. There's a theme here. I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Greek word, nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown in the fire, burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask what you wish. It'll be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So pruning, you survived the prune, okay? You survived point one. Point two, remain connected to Jesus. Eight times there, do you see the word remain or abide? Remain, abide. That's your first call as a Christ follower, as a disciple, as a Christian. Not doing anything. First call is remaining connected to him. It's opposite of the world. The world says, you know what? If you strive, if you work, if you hustle, if you strain and try harder, then there's a place, then there's a promotion, then there's an open door, then you get an opportunity if you do all these things. And the kingdom says... You have potential. Stay connected, and I'm going to prune you right out of the gate. And that's a hard thing because as Christians, we like to do stuff. We like to do stuff. We like to be busy. We like to do stuff. And Jesus is saying, I want you to stay connected. Let me prune. Let me do my work. Let me bear fruit. And it's going to be a good thing. You're going to authentically represent me in this world. You will be salt and light. It's going to be good. You're not going to be a facsimile. You're not going to be, you know, this, this religious person. No. I like this. I don't care if you like this. I like this. I really do. I really like this. This is the truth. We cling. We stay close. We rest. We continue. We don't leave. We stay put. Gosh. Been married 32 and a half years. I think we're going to make it. 32 and a half years. But you know what? I think the best thing I've ever done, my wife will tell you this, I've come home 11,862 times. <laughs> That's it. You just come home. And you stay home. And you stay put. And you let the good, the bad, and the ugly manifest. And here comes the gardener. I can tell you right now, I can look you straight in the eye, just tell you the truth. More in love with my wife now than ever before. Can't wait to get home. Can't wait. I might cut the service short just so I can get home. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm not, I'm not even just want to hang out with her. She doesn't always want to hang out with me. <laughs> like, okay, you're being annoying now, following around like a little puppy. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? How's it going? How's your day going? I just worked 10 hours. Can you give me like 30 minutes? Okay, I'll be at the door. <laughs> my world. So this remain, the remain, what is it, you know, it's, it's deciding. He, notice he said, if you, you have a choice in the matter. You can come, you can go. You can stay connected, you can disconnect yourself. You can isolate. You can not get involved. You can not get involved in community. You can get in, not get involved in fellowship. You can keep your distance from everybody if you want. There's not going to be any fruit. I mean, you have to, you and I have to come to the place that the disciples were at. Jesus said, are you leaving too? Where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Where am I going to go? You have the words of eternal life. I did the world. I did the world. Did it all. Did the big three. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Did it all. And it's nothing. It's garbage. Nothing. Where am I going to go? Back to that? No. Let's stay connected. Prune away, Lord Jesus. Prune away. Bear fruit. This is good. It's, I mean, this... This is good. Waiting. You know how long it takes to, to, to create grapes? It's like five years. And then the wine experts tell me, it takes more years after that to get the grapes really good, good wine quality. It's patience. It's waiting. It's enduring. It's staying. It's hanging in there. It's meditating on the words. If my word, if you remain in me, and my words um, abide in you, remain in you, it's the word. It's repenting. Jesus said, bear, therefore produce fruit consistent with repentance. 
Face your errors. Face your failures. Call them out. Come clean. Confess. Give up self-effort. What needs to be pruned? I want to get to this. What needs to be pruned? Because some of you are thinking, man, what, what, what's, what's, what's he going after? What's, what's happening in my life here? Here's, here's what needs to be pruned. And you can just like, just ignore. I'm just going to throw some stuff out there. Hobbies. Is a hobby bad? No. Are too many hobbies bad? Maybe not bad, but they get in the way of other things that God wants to do. I've known guys. I've been the guy that played on multiple teams at a time. It's like, wow, man, I got time to drive to ball games, play in ball games, be exhausted after I'm done. Hard time picking up the word. Wow. Look in the mirror. Why are you unfruitful? Too many hobbies. Gets pruned. It's going to get pruned one way or the other. Either by the spirit or you're going to get old. (laughs) Parts just don't move like they used to. (laughs) Pruned. (laughs) You don't play some of that stuff anymore. Pruned. Attitudes. Sarcasm. You know what sarcasm means? To tear the flesh. That's what sarcasm means. And sometimes we think we're just being cute. I don't know, resentments. You know, some, somebody did something to you and you didn't, you didn't confront them on it. You just let it simmer and sit. And then you rehearse it over and over and over and over. It gets into a loop. Little thing. It wasn't a big thing. It was a little thing. But because you have resentment, it keeps spiraling, getting bigger and growing, multiplying. becomes an unfruitful work of darkness. Shame. You know, self-hatred has never helped God's redemptive process ever? Shame. That guilt that drives your head down keeps you from believing that God has anything good for you. That's a sucker branch, man, that needs to get lopped. Healed, but lopped. Let God prune that sucker. Social media. Did you hear the pin drop? It was carpet, and I heard the pin drop. (laughs) Well, how will I know if people like me? (laughs) Ask them. (laughs) Do you like me? (laughs) And if you get one that says yes, close the account. It's good, okay? Screenshot it. Keep it with you. I don't know if people like me. They did. They do. This is what happens in my prayer time. (laughs) Busyness. Busyness. Busyness isn't productivity. Busyness is moral laziness. Busyness is looking like you got something going on, but you don't. You're just busy. Well, you don't know my life. I know you have control over your life. I know you're called to manage your life. And if you're flying by the seat of your pants, that's not the way to fly. Busyness. It's not a badge of nobility. I'm so busy. Well, you're not busy enough, too busy to tell me that you're busy. <laughs> let it go, let it go, let it go. <laughs> and I hate that song. <laughs> I do. Um, you know, Procrastination. You know, the I'm gonna's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. All of a sudden, it becomes the was gonna's. I was, was gonna. You know, that guy, you know, don't be that person. Prune it. Procrastinate. Just do it. People pleasing. Debt. Entertainment. I'm always amazed at the person that's struggling spiritually and can recall 10 episodes of Friends and quote Chandler. But then they can't figure out, I just, I'm so dry. Chandler's not going to help you in the wilderness. (laughs) And if you're mad, good. Prune that too. Seriously. I mean, listen. It's natural to bear fruit. It's unnatural not to bear fruit. Man, 
And I'm talking about me. If you weren't even here, I would I'd preach to these chairs. I'm not even kidding. I would. i go, you going to hold this? No, kidding, man. You're reading my mail. Man, she's, you're not going to bear life. God, it's such truth. That's, that's not what that was for, but it felt good. I hope I didn't chip my tooth on the microphone. Was, heck. Once again, I don't plan. I mean, I had notes, 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 not even getting to faithfulness. You got to cover it. You cover faithfulness. This is, where, this is where God's dealing with you. The gardener is alive and active right now. I see you in the fifth. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. It's the main event. Now, if you're sitting there right now saying, there's nothing to prune in my life, man, we will get to that arrogance like right now. Right, I mean right now. I've been walking with Jesus 50 years, but you don't even know. Oh, no, no. We'll cut that sucker out. Yeah. Oh, I remember back in the good old days. Forget it. They weren't that good. What's the new thing God's doing right now? Yeah, I love the testimony 50 years ago. It's today. What's today? Lady in the second row right there, new, three weeks ago. She goes, I've had a pinched nerve two years. Three people prayed for it. Boom, gone, healed. Now, that's, that's the testimony I want to know, like right now. What else needs to be pruned? Unbelief. Evil heart of unbelief is what Hebrew says. Prune toxic people. If you're around a person, they're just negative and divisive, you know, you know, confront them, warn them in love. But at some point, you got to say, this could be poisonous to my soul. This is roundup to my heart. I, gotta, I can't do it. I'm not talking about mean. I'm not talking about judgmental. I'm just talking about there's some people, they're not your friends. And it's not fellowship. There's some people, they drag you down. Now, if God gives you the grace he says, I'm giving you grace for this right here, then go with the grace. But if you find yourself, like, when you leave a relationship and it's like, I always feel small, I always feel belittled, I always feel, like, charged up, I always feel like, you know, they fault-finded, you know? Carry some pruners with you. I'm not even joking, man. Keep them in your back pocket in the sheath. The sheath. And somebody starts going funky, you just pull that thing out. Hey, yeah, go ahead, keep talking. <laughs> I'm getting ready. Jesus said, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, desire for other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Listen, the cares of this world, these are once again just kind of preoccupations, the distractions, the non-essentials, although they may not be bad things, are things that are inhibiting growth. They choke the word, literally. They strangle the life out of the word. But let me tell you something else. The word does a number on the cares of the world. The word of God chokes the cares of the world. Cares of the world choke the word. The word chokes the cares of the world. All right. Nuts. Didn't even get halfway done. Stinker. Should have pruned. <laughs> the devil made me do it. You made me do it. No, seriously. You got to get this. No, this is the main event. You got to get this. The love, joy, peace, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. Those things follow what I just said, not the other way around. You don't get those things there. Oh, I got to get back to Jesus. No, 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 no. You get connected to Jesus, everything else manifests. Stand up. Here's all I want. I just want to know this. How many of you would say the Holy Spirit revealed at least one sucker in your life that needs to be pruned? And don't just say it to say it. If you really felt like the Lord said, yeah, yeah, it's time, it's time. This is it right here. Hold your hand up. Lock the elbow. Okay, look around at all the suckers. <laughs> what? No, this, this is it, man. This is it. Okay. Now, if you're willing to let him prune it, keep your hand up. If not, you know, sit down, fold your arms, put a little mean look on your face. <laughs> okay, Jesus, you see it. 
you see it. You see the sucker. You see that wild growth, the non-essential growth, the life that's imitation. It's stealing from the true life and sap that wants to bear fruit in our lives. You know what it is. You've exposed it. You've revealed it. Now, we ask you with the precision of the word of God and the spirit of God, would you prune that thing today? God, give us a revelation of how no good, it's, it's not good for us. Prune it. We ask you to prune it. God, the attitude, the attitudes of the heart, God, what, whatever it is, God, prune it. Just prune that one thing today, God. And I pray in the weeks to come, people say, that service right there, this is what got pruned from my life. And the result will be at some point, there will be fruit. So we thank you. You are faithful, God. You're deliberate, but you're careful. And we thank you. We trust your carefulness in our lives. We trust your goodness in our lives. We thank you that you're not reckless. So we submit, we surrender, and we stay connected to you. In the strong name of Jesus, and everybody said, amen. Amen.